Hey again, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Speaking of Sundara, where I talk about Sundara, Dawn of a New Age, my fantasy RPG setting. As I've mentioned previously, I'm currently blueprinting and working on a lot of ideas for future supplements for the setting, future expansions, but it takes time for those things to get from my work desk to DriveThruRPG, where you can all pick them up and check them out. So between now and then, I didn't just want to be silent, I wanted to give you know, some of the players and readers out there a bit of an idea as to what I'm working on and what you can see coming forward. And I talked about Phase 4 previously, but between now and then there's some other fun stuff I wanted to put together. One of which is I wanted to expand a little bit on the Prim and its effects on the material world. Now, for folks who haven't been with us since the start of this show, I talked about the Prim very, very early on, but it was an idea first introduced in Gods of Sundara, uh, which was the sixth splat book that came out for the setting. And the basic idea is instead of your usual multiplanar setting that we're used to for a lot of fantasy RPGs, thanks to Dungeons and Dragons, Sundara only has two. There's the material world, where all the creatures and rocks and objects and plants are. And then there's the Prim, short for the Primal, which is also referred to as the Weird, the Weft, the Well, various other terms. But it is the realm of the gods, and it is the realm of magic. It is where all of your spells draw their power from, and it's where all of these strange outer planar beings exist. And the Prim is this huge, roiling realm of just chaotic nonsense. It is a place where there is potential for anything to happen. It is a place of raw possibility, and if you can imagine it, it exists somewhere in the Prim. And if it didn't, when you imagined it, it may have popped into existence. It's a very handy way for game masters not to feel limited by the normal setup you have with all the various different planes if you have an idea or if you have a thought that doesn't really fit into a more traditional structured setup. But because of that, the Prim can feel very far away and very confusing. And that happens in a lot of our fantasy RPGs. We'll have these fantastical realms, but they almost never come up, and unless you are a high-level adventurer or you get caught in some very unfortunate circumstances, it's never going to affect your life at all to the point that you may not even know about it. It's not a thing that's important for your average peasant, your average fighter, your average caravan guard. It's just never going to come up. And that is a major way in which the Prim deviates from a lot of these other fantastical realms and other settings of the Prim, despite being so strange and so unusual, is very close to the lives of all the people who live in Sundara, because the realms of the spiritual and the realms of the physical are not as far removed as they might be in other places. And part of that is the idea of faith, of course, you know, when you have people who are devoted to certain deities or certain extraplanar creatures of that will allow them to bridge the gap. They'll be able to grant power to people, and that represents a flow of energy from the Prim into the material realm to power spells and various magical rites. That's just one explanation, though, of beyond that, there are thin places in reality, or temporary bridges between the real world and the Prim, and often it's very difficult to understand where they come from or how they got there. Sometimes these things might be caused by long-term use of magic in one place, or they might have been caused by very specific rituals meant to create a gateway or a barrier or an accident that something went wrong. For those who picked up Maud's City of Bones, that's kind of what happened to the city in its original setting, as you saw back in the, the section with uh, ST rumors and, and unfortunate things that could have happened in the past. The original priest kings, the sorcerer kings, they tried to open up a gateway into the Prim to use it to power the city and various rituals, and things went wrong, and a containment breach kind of let the Prim pour into reality, and that was why the city was so cursed for so long. It took time for that to be dealt with, and it's still leaking through. You know, the area under Maud is weak. It's very close to the Prim. It's kind of been worn through. But you can see this in other parts of the setting, if there's a battlefield where lots of magic was used and lots of death was caused, that huge expulsion of energy might have rubbed reality a little bit raw, and weird things can happen when that occurs. You might also see it if there's plague, if there's large-scale sacrifice. Anything that can alter reality on a large scale might start 
wearing away that boundary between the material and the spiritual. But it's also possible for things to happen from the other end. The prim is constantly shifting, constantly changing. There's often conflict between the creatures and entities that exist in the prim, and large-scale warfare between major powers of the prim could slosh over. Waves could crest and land in the material world. It might lead to strange weather patterns. It could cause a village to suddenly be emptied of people. It could cause animals to become intelligent or to become cursed in some way. It might lead to a temporary river of gold flowing from the top of a mountain, which then vanishes before most people can see it. The prim is very close, and it is a thing that everyone knows about, even if they don't call it the same thing. If it has other names in your mythology and your local legends, people just accept that occasionally the world of the spirits, the world beyond, will bleed over and do strange things in reality. And often when you have large scale effects like this, it's called a prim quake. And that's what happens when either something on this end, something on the other end, or some combination thereof manages to create friction and create a crack. And the effects of a prim quake could be as deadly as people going berserk and running on murderous rampages, it could be as unusual as a strange light show in the sky, or bizarre fog that is impossible to navigate through, or that you might get lost in. You might even wander up into another world. And these things are just a reality of living in Sundara. Of They don't happen often outside of those places I mentioned that may have a thin barrier between the material and the spiritual realm, but they're common enough that people know about them, and that while they might be terrifying, they're thought of more as natural disasters than they are of some infernal force bleeding through or the wrath of some god most of the time. To the point that while that term may not be universal, there are people who are well-traveled, who are learned, who will recognize these things for what they are. And there are going to be parties of adventurers, there's going to be guilds, there's going to be various other organizations that attempt to study them, that attempt to harvest the results, and some that may even attempt to cause them trying to get certain results out of the chaos that is a primquake. Uh, for, no, sorry, for example, the um, Sorcerer's Quartz, an uh, unusual element that will store magical energy, is often caused by primquakes. And it can be very difficult to predict when it happens or what the necessary forces are to make it happen. But if you could figure out how to get it to produce this material, that would be hugely, hugely valuable. But the question is how many towns are going to get eaten up by unexpected infernos? How many creatures are going to mutate into horrible monsters between now and when you figure out the formula for making that happen? If there even is a formula, it might just be rolling the dice and hoping that the prim does what you want it to this one time out of the last thousand times you tried. And that's something that I want to expand on. I want to give Game Masters more resources for. I want to create additional lore for. I like the idea of the realms bleeding over. I like the idea of the prim being an ever-present thing that people have to contend with, that you have to deal with. And it really does add a little bit to the random encounters that you might have to mess with because, as I mentioned, Sundara doesn't have alignment the way um, a lot of games are moving away from alignment these days. And so there's been that question of, well, if you're not dealing with evil gods, if you're not dealing with evil creatures or devils or demons, what are the challenges that you have as an adventurer? And one of those things might be providing disaster relief in the event of a primquake or attempting to undo the effects that it has caused to a particular region or through a particular part of the country. And that's something that you're just going to have to have people on hand willing to contend with. It's not going to go away. There's no real certain way to stop it. It's kind of like having a fire watch of fires are going to happen. The best you can do is have trained personnel on hand 
who can contain the damage and who can undo as much of it as possible before it spreads out of control and really hurts more people than it absolutely has to. And that was my thought this week. Uh, let me know out there if you find the prim interesting or if you have questions about it. Uh, let me know in the comments so that I can answer them. And if there's anything you'd like to see more of, if you want to see certain realms within the prim, if you want more creatures or more character types, if you want a specific sorcerer or archetype for those who have been touched by the prim, if you want me to expand on the uh, the creature archetype of the Prim Touched, which replaced Typhling and Asimar in this setting. Let me know that too. Uh, as usual, uh, pick up the books at the link in the description. And uh, until next time, happy gaming, everyone.